if we're going to see a true manifestation of the power of God in the body of Christ, in the church of Jesus Christ, and I'm not just talking about the building, but yes, that includes the building too. If we're going to see the true manifestation of the power that Jesus said we can have, then we need to have a greater understanding and a greater capacity to embrace all of the ministry gifts. I'm talking about the apostle, but I'm talking about all the ministry gifts too. But for the sake of this segment, we want to just take the time to just talk with you for a few minutes. Now, I know a lot of times when people look at videos and stuff, they're caught up in the backdrop and stuff like that. And sometimes people get distracted and miss something important because they're more concerned about the backdrop that people use than the message itself. Now, I understand that we're in a CC world that people judge you by what you see. I understand all of that, but this is the bottom line. Hear truth for what it is because I'm going to tell you something. When we go out into the streets, a lot of the people that we deal with they don't have it going on like that. They, they're not dressed in the fanciest of clothes. Many people are, are dealing with a lot of situations. And there's some people that are more into the external than they are the, in, in them, the internal. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't dress nice or look good when you're capable of doing it. But we can get so caught up in the exterior that we forget that God is bigger than those things. It's nice to have them, but many people get caught up in the things more than they get caught up in the God. That's a very dangerous thing. So there's a fine balance between things and God. I wanted to throw that in for good measure. We're dealing with the, the aspect of the apostle, and it's important to understand the build on what we talked about. People will say that apostles establish churches. Yes, that can be true. But it is more true to say that apostles establish ministries. Because again, like I said previously, many people classify the establishing of churches with the apostleship. But this is the issue that, 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 we, can, that we, we have to address. If we're going to establish a church, it needs to carry the DNA of a true apostle. And I'm a firm believer in 2 Corinthians 12 and 12. So, the DNA of an apostle is somebody who operates basically in the supernatural. You can't say that you're, that you're those things, and we don't see no manifestation of that. The devil is a lie. It's more than just having the title, but the ministry itself should speak for you. This is the bottom line. Because there's people out there that will question a person's calling, but nobody can ever argue with evidence. That's the bottom line. We've seen since we started our ministry, and I've been an ordained apostle for 26 years, but you know, we went, I went through a little bit of a transition for a lot of those years to get to the place where what we're talking about right now. When we officially started our ministry, Covenant Unlimited Ministries, Brendan and myself, we saw lots of miracles, and we still do to this day. We see healings, Different things take place, so much so that we don't take the time to talk about it every day or every other day whenever they happen, but stuff happens all the time, whether it's prophetic words, healings, deliverances, stuff like that happens. People are, are the presence of God is real. So, but we've seen, we've seen countless things. We've seen demons cast out. We, we've seen situations where one lady in particular, and she's the reason why we're on YouTube in the first place. She got delivered over the phone. We wasn't physically there at the hospital. We couldn't get there, so we had um, one of our church members put the phone, which was her sister, put the phone to, I mean, to her so we can speak over her. Within 24 hours, she was up because what had happened was is that she had been running around the hospital pretty much kind of in an indecent state because her mind had left her. But we spoke over her, and God delivered her over the phone. Her mind came back. And she had never physically met us before. And then after she came out and got delivered, she asked for she asked for Pastors Kirk and Brenda. I can't explain that. But 
We've seen people healed over the phone, coming out of wheelchairs over the phone, people delivered, healings taking place because there's no distancing and anointing. It's important to understand that because, I mean, that when we talk about these things, it's important to understand that one of our responsibilities, one of our responsibilities as an apostle is to manifest the presence of God, is to manifest the kingdom of God, is to manifest the supernatural. Jesus did more than just teach. He demonstrated and he manifested. And I'm not just talking about every two or three years or every so often. I mean, this, this stuff that happens here quite often, matter of fact, I mean, there's, there's very few days that go by when we're not in the store, when we're not in the street or in the hospital, that something does not happen. And, and there's been services that we've been invited to where everybody's gotten healed. I can't say honestly in every service, but in, in a lot of services, and particularly when they came up for prayer. When they came up in prayer, needed prayer, in, in a lot of cases, depending on what was going on in the floor of the anointing, God healed everybody, and I'm not lying about that. And, and for those of you that say, well, uh, God doesn't heal everybody, case in, okay, I, I understand where you're coming. But remember this. When, you, when you're dealing with, um, hallelujah, glory to God, let's deal with this real quick. Okay, now let's deal with this real quick. Going back to what we say. When people establish churches, I've seen, particularly here locally in this area, I've seen church plants and people establishing churches here. But the problem with that is, a lot of them, I mean, I've seen this already. A lot of the people in the churches are sick, and they've been sick for days, weeks, and months. And, they, and, and, and sometimes the ministers themselves are on more medication than the pharmacy. I mean, really, I mean, if we're going to establish churches, we need to establish them according to the DNA of the church, first and foremost. But, we, but many people have, have, um, have, met, have, did, have did the apostleship a disservice when they say that all apostles do is establish churches. It goes greater than that. Really, it goes greater than that. There has to be um, evidence that it's apostolic through the power and the presence of God. You can't say you're an apostle and you don't walk in the power and the presence of God. L let's, just, let's, let's just deal with that. Let's, let's deal with the bottom line here. So we're talking about that, I mean, on the standpoint from the apostle, but the truth of the matter is every minister of God should have some degree of authority and power. I want to make that clear. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher should be able to handle up on their business. But, but particularly when we're dealing with the apostle, you have, you have to have evidence in regards to the supernatural in your life. And you should also be able to walk. Your language as an apostle is different from other people's because you carry dimensional revelation. You carry revelation on a different level. And you can tell those apostles by what comes out of their mouth. What their, what their mode of thinking is. I mean, what's their agenda? What is their assignment? Apostles are not just confined just to the local body. Yes, there are apostles who do pastor. Let me make that clear. But from what I've seen and what I know is that those, those apostles that do pastor have a different take on the church and, and the function of the church and they do things from a different perspective. They're not necessarily confined, worried about they, I mean, their, their sheep. They're not only concerned about their sheep, but they're concerned about, about their sheep and also the sphere of influence that, that they've been delegated. Because if you're, if you're an apostle, you've been delegated a sphere of authority. That's powerful, and you need to know that. This is the, this is the reason why we, when people want to gravitate to this I mean, to, to the ministry you cannot do that except that you're called there's lots of people that want to that want to give themselves a name because of certain quote unquote because of the status of it I promise you those are the wrong reasons I guarantee you those are the wrong reasons for for I mean 
for even thinking along those lines. Because I know, the, I know the scrutiny that I've had to deal with. I know the breaking of the Lord that I've had to deal with over these years. I understand that. So be careful what you ask for when you want something. If God has not given it to you, don't ask. <laughs> really, seriously, don't ask. Because there's a greater responsibility and there's an accountability when you say that. I mean, there's a greater accountability. So it's important to understand that when we establish churches apostolically, the evidence that they are apostolic churches is, is the supernatural power of God that is released in there. It's not just about establishing a church with a bunch of people coming together with doctrine. Hear me. It's not just about that. It's the manifestation of the Spirit and the DNA that comes off of those that have established it, and, and it's reflected in what happens on a continuous basis. That that's in the that's in the church, and what happens once the church doors are closed. That's very important. So let's tie this together in a nice little bow. First Corinthians chapter nine. It reads as such: Am I not an apostle? We're, we're following up on it. Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are ye not my work in the Lord? So he's making a reference of, of what he's imparted in to the people in, in, in the church of Corinth, okay? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. So here we go. Building people as well as ministries, building people. So is and, and so let me read up to verse number five. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to leave about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles? I mean, I'm going to focus on that. And as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas. So he makes an illustration here that he has the ability to lead other apostles. And this is where the, the concept and the idea of the chief apostle comes in. There are, dimension, there, there are dimensional prophets that have the ability to raise others up and, 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 and to elevate and to bring people to a specific place in life. And they, ha, they, have, they have an authority to be able to do those things. Now, Jesus himself, we, we would consider him a chief apostle because he trained other apostles. When you look at Matthew chapter 10, the scripture tells you that there was apostles, but he took the time to raise up other apostles so that way they would be able to do the work. So, again, there are some apostles that are apostles of apostles. It is what it is. Now, you have to be very careful about calling yourself a chief apostle based upon the amount of churches you have. And you don't walk in the DNA and the authority. That's powerful. I feel strongly about this. Because if you are an apostle of apostles, you carry a dimensional anointing that not only is manifested in your personal life, but for those that are connected to you, for those that are truly connected to you, they'll be able to walk in that. They'll, they'll be, because they're connected to you, they'll be able to receive an impartation because they'll be a partaker of the grace that is upon your life. That's very important. So... When you operate in these dimensions, there's a greater accountability. And with that accountability, apostles have, again, like we've said before, apostles have the ability to walk in an intimacy before God that's very unique. And they walk in order because all of the true apostles that I've met weren't just apostles in title only. They walked in an aura of respect. When they walked, the presence of God was with them, and it was a clear manifestation of that. And that's the way we want to live our lives as men and women of God. And being a catalyst in this day for the supernatural, that's what the apostle is. They're a catalyst for the supernatural. And again, just like I've told you before, when they speak, now say for example, when, when Apostle Young prophesies, as a prophet and as apostle, many times the, prof the, the prophecy and the revelation, inspired revelation, which also includes word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and everything like that, which also includes those things, it is spoken, the prophetic is spoken 
from an apostolic perspective, lots of cases, because we activate gifts in people. We activate callings in people. We see destinies in people that they don't see in themselves a lot of times. I was the beneficiary of that years ago when I was learning in my way. There was apostles that spoke over my life and activated things in me that, that was there from the beginning, but I needed some clarity. So it's important to understand the function of an apostle in this day. But Jesus took the time to train apostles for three and a half years. There was apostles, according to the scriptures, but they was in training. It's very much conceivable to be in a congregation where there's people that have the calling of God as apostles, but they're in training. Because when I start, when I when I got called to this min, the ministry that I eventually got ordained in, years ago it was under a different ministry. It was under a different name, Newark Evangelist Revival Center. There was apostles in training under the chief apostle, Apostle Garrus. So they would, in addition to the apostles. There was prophets, there was evangelists, there was pastors and teachers. We understand that in today's church, we need a manifestation of what we call the fivefold ministry. Now, the fivefold ministry can be a combination of an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. But we've said this in times past, that an apostle, the apostles I know, have the ability to operate and be able to touch all of the other ministry gifts. So, again, we also want to remember that in this particular situation, if you're an apostle, you have the ability to be able to activate people in these other callings as well. Yes, an evangelist should be able to teach about what an evangelist is supposed to be. Yes, a prophet is supposed to be able to teach what a prophet is supposed to be. But an apostle, in a lot of cases, you know, they have a grace that is there to be able to activate these things. That's powerful because... Many apostles have the ability to operate, just like I told you before. I'm an ordained apostle. I was called as a prophet, and I was given an evangelistic assignment. So, much of the evangelism that Apostle Young does, I mean, I ain't going to say much, all of it. <laughs> all of the evangelism that Apostle Young does is, is based upon the leading of the Spirit. And this is important, because there's a lot of generic evangelism out there. You have the, as apostles, when we evangelize, we evangelize from a different perspective. We evangelize from a supernatural prophetic perspective. When we go out and, and tell people about the things of the Lord, I have the ability to, 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 to hear what the mind of God is in regards to the person that's standing in front of me. If I stand in front of them, you know, God will eventually open me up and, and, and say something if God is specifically leading me to them. There's people that come to us for prayer. But if God is specifically leading me to somebody, God's going to give me what to tell them from a supernatural perspective. There, I haven't seen generic witnessing in years. <laughs> I haven't seen that in years because once you start to operate in the things of the Spirit, there's no more. There's no more. There's no more generic ministry. It's supernatural, powerful ministry. Hallelujah. Yes, there are apostles, and then there are what we call chief apostles. So let's let's go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to tie this together, starting at verse number 27. 1 Corinthians 12, verse number 27, it says, Now ye are the body of Christ, ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles. Now, I want to tell you, that does not have an expiration date on it until Jesus comes back, all right? All right, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Paul asked the question, are all apostles? The answer is no. Are all prophets? Of course, the answer is no. Are all teachers? Same answer. Are all workers of miracles? No, but we're going to tie this together. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Hallelujah. Now, it's important to understand with the ministry gifts in particular, people benefit off the grace that is on these ministries. 
when we properly cross-reference scripture, the Lord says, these signs shall follow those that believe in their name, that they shall cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, they shall speak with tongues. Now, again, the idea of interpret I mean, the dealing with the gifts of the Spirit in regards to the tongues, speaking with tongues, the scripture is, is talking about the gift of tongues, not the prayer language tongue. Because a lot of people have erroneously used the scripture to say to all speak in tongues and say that everybody cannot speak in tongues in such as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is talking about the gift of tongues here. So, so let's make sure we're clear on that. But everyone, every born again believer has the ability at some point to be able to lay hands. Now let's, let's be clear about this. Every believer has the ability to operate in any of the nine gifts. It's just that the ministry gifts, like the office of an apostle, the office of a prophet, the office of an evangelist, the office of a pastor, the office of a teacher, they walk in a different dimension of these gifts. So let's be clear on this. They walk in a different dimension of the gifts, but everybody have the ability to operate to some degree in some capacity, but just on a different level. But this is the thing. There's lots of people that say they're born again that have never done any of these things. This is why we need the true men and women of God to step forward and do more than just preach and teach, but administer according to the grace. And particularly, we're talking about the apostles now. The apostles need to manifest more so than just teach, because we got a lot of teaching out here, but we don't have a lot of manifestation. Allow the grace, apostles, hear me, allow the grace that's on the inside of you to be released so somebody can be a partaker of it. You cannot release something, I mean, they cannot be a partaker of something that's not released. They cannot be a partaker of it. You have to take your stand. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you men and women of God, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, walk in the supernatural. Walk in the supernatural today. Don't be afraid of the rejection of men because they rejected Jesus and he's no better than us. And it doesn't matter how many people reject you, somebody's going to embrace who you are. And it's important to understand because the body of Christ needs the true men and women of God to come forward. We speak a blessing over you today. We release apostolic authority over you in the name of Jesus. We seal this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As the Lord allows, we'll come to you again in the not-too-distant future. This is Apostle Young. Have a blessed and anointed day. Talk to you soon.